All right. So, Isabel, thank you for coming in and uh, talking a little bit about the April 8th eclipse. I mean, what what makes it so amazing? Like, why should educators, students, parents be so excited about this eclipse on April 8th? Well, the eclipse on April 8th is going to be, for many Canadians and many people in Quebec, a total eclipse. Um, so for everyone who's in the region of totality, it's going to get completely dark, just like at night, uh, yeah. because the sun will be completely hidden from us, except for maybe a little corona just around the moon. So just because of the way the Earth, the moon, and the sun will line up, uh, that's what we'll get to see. For most people, a total eclipse is really a once-in-a-lifetime event. Mm -hmm. um, and then for people who are outside the region of totality in the rest of Canada um, and other parts of Quebec, it's still going to be a partial eclipse, which is also really cool to watch. Um, the closer you are to the region of totality, the more the sun will be covered up uh, by the moon and the more spectacular it's going to be. That once in a lifetime, I think, should be highlighted because it's an opportunity yes. that our kids will talk to their grandkids about, right? Like, absolutely, just putting your mind around that is boggling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people like travel internationally to go and see a total eclipse, but for many of us, we'll have a chance to see it in our backyard. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's something not to be missed for sure. Excellent, and like, so the the trajectory is going through Ontario and Quebec, and it's kind of like it splits our island of Montreal and then heads towards yes. Sherbrooke, okay? And yeah. like, so people can expect darkness to come. It's going to get like mm -hmm. dusk-like, night-like. Um, what are, wh what's the, maybe describe a little bit of like what a total eclipse is. What What's that phenomenon? What, what happens? Right. So basically what happens is, well, in any solar eclipse is that the moon is going to happen to be positioned between the Earth and the sun. Uh, so depending where you are located on Earth, like you, that might mean the moon is hiding just a little part of the sun from your view or all of it. Um, so when we talk about the region of totality, that's all the different places on Earth where you'll be able to see a total eclipse. So the sun will be completely hidden behind the moon. Uh, in this case, so the eclipse itself, so when you'll start to see the sun hidden a little bit by the moon, around 2.15 approximately in the uh, different regions in Quebec. So between 2.15 and 4.30, there'll be a little bit of the sun um, will be hidden and the peak will be around 3.30. So at the peak, that's when it will be the darkest, the biggest portion of the sun will be hidden. If you're in the region of totality, it will be entirely hidden. So just to describe a little bit the region of totality, I mean, I encourage people to go online and to look at an eclipse map mm -hmm. um, to figure out exactly how close you are from the region of totality. But just to give you a rough idea, it's a little bit of a diagonal line. So Valleyfield will be like one of the westernmost points that will be in the region of totality. Um, then like all the southern half of Montreal, the south shore of Montreal, all the way down to the U.S. border, um, anyone south of Drummondville, uh, St. Joseph de Beauce, so all that area in south uh, in Quebec, you'll be in the zone of totality. Um, Quebec City, Trois-Rivières, Laval, the northern half of Montreal, the Laurentian, so all those areas a little bit north will be just a little bit outside the zone. If you're in one of those areas, you could consider going to the zone of totality uh, to experience a total eclipse. But, you know, if you get like a 99% eclipse, that's going to be pretty spectacular, too. Um, I encourage people to plan in advance uh, where you're going to watch the eclipse. Uh, make sure it's a good time to start thinking about that. Mm -hmm. So make sure you pick a spot that doesn't have like high buildings or trees, especially when you look towards southwest, so where the sun is in the afternoon. It would be a good idea to start staking out a spot and to go there uh, and look, where's the sun around 3.30 and do you have a clear view of it? Mm -hmm. um, the day of the eclipse, you can keep an eye on the radar map, try to avoid, try to see if it's going to be cloudy. Mm -hmm. If it's cloudy, it will be fine too. Um, 
I experienced a partial eclipse with, uh, I had gone to a summer camp and I was helping the kids like understand what they were seeing. It was a cloudy day. That's a few years ago. And I have to say like seeing the, the eclipse pop in and out of the clouds was really fun. Like the kids would just play on the playground whenever it peeked out from behind the, the clouds. It was like really exciting. They would put on their glasses, look at them, make some observations. Um, so don't be discouraged if it's cloudy. If it's very, very cloudy, uh, to the extent you don't see the eclipse, it will still be a really incredible event. Um, even though you might not see the pattern of the moon and the sun, it's going to dark get dark um, mm -hmm. pretty suddenly uh, in the middle of the afternoon. And it's a very weird light quality. It's not quite the sunrise, like the sunrise and sunset because the, the sun is so high, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still like the light fades out and fades in pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, whatever the yeah. weather conditions are like, it'll be interesting to see. does that last for where the the moon is completely covering the sun in 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 yeah. in the path that in the zone of totality, totality. Yeah. so the closer you are to the middle of the zone of totality the longer it's going to last so it could be several minutes uh, on the other end if you're just on the edge of the zone of totality it could be just a few seconds so that's something to consider as well um when the eclipse happens you know people uh, I think we'll be really interested wherever they are to, to watch it. So you'll probably have people like stopping their car, things like that. So make sure you're somewhere well in advance in a safe spot and you have your 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 spot uh, planned out. Like it, there may be some kind of last minute uh, traffic, that kind of stuff. So, so don't kind take of plan any in advance on that day as yeah. well, because there could be traffic and chaos yes. yeah <laughs> um, yeah i love that idea too of finding your spot like go and seek yeah. it out first check it out see when the sun is at that time um and particularly for parents like here in quebec anyway we're we're, we're looking at that most schools will be on a ped day um mm -hmm. so it would be parents that would be finding those spots for their kids so yeah. keep that in mind parents um yeah. What about the precautions? Now, we know that there's a lot of um, myths or, you know, misconceptions maybe about an eclipse. Um, I've heard stories of when the eclipse happened when our generation was in grade school and that, you know, windows were closed, yeah. kids were shoved under desks. Like, what's what are the safety issues about this eclipse in particular that we should be aware of? Yeah, I, I'm glad those conversations are happening well in advance uh, while there's time for people to uh, figure out how to uh, be safe the day of the eclipse. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different ways to to do it. Once again, like plan a little bit in advance. Um, during an eclipse, the sun is not more dangerous than like on an average sunny day. Uh, you should never look at the sun directly for any amount of time uh, just because of the brightness of the sun and not just the brightness, but like UV rays, infrared rays, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, they can damage your eyes if you look at the sun directly. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened during an eclipse, it's just that people are more likely to be curious to look at the sun. So that's that's why there's a concern there. Mm -hmm. But there are several ways to look at the eclipse safely. Um, the easiest way is to have an eclipse, eclipse viewing glasses. So they look a little bit uh, like cardboard kind of sunglasses, but they're not regular sunglasses. Regular sunglasses are not going to protect your eyes. Mm -hmm. So if you can get some special eclipse glasses or eclipse viewing, viewers, make sure they're um, legitimate <laughs> eclipse glasses. So they should have on them uh, some a little blurb that refers to an ISO standard mm -hmm. uh, that are safe. Uh, many kids will be getting eclipse classes through their schools or community groups. Um, so that if you have one pair for the family and you share it, like that's totally doable. So that's the first thing. Um, even if you have glasses, like don't look through and you're wearing glasses, don't look through binoculars, a telescope or anything like that because they do concentrate the light more. They need special filters made especially for binoculars, telescope and so on. So the glasses are just for looking directly mm -hmm. at the sun. 
If you don't have any of those special filters or any glasses, you still got option. Uh, so I would encourage you to make a pinhole projector, which is a really fun way to look at the eclipse. It can be, you just need a very tiny hole in a piece of cardboard or um, an aluminum, piece of aluminum foil, aluminum pie plate. Just take a little needle and just punch like a little hole or you can punch a bunch of different holes and make a pattern um, and then just let the light of the sun go through those holes and project either on the ground or another piece of, of paper and you'll be projecting a little image of the sun it works very well so if you do it on a regular day you'll just see like a little round image of the sun yep. during the eclipse you'll start to see the crescent shape of the cool. eclipse cool. so that's something anyone can do even at the last minute cool. so just to clarify that a bit so the pinhole you're not putting a pin in and then putting it up to your eye that's you're actually right. letting it project onto yep. a surface exactly you're not looking through the hole at the sun you right. would never do that you're just looking at kind of the shadow that the pie plate or is casting on the ground cool right. yeah Thanks. yeah that's so that's there's wicked. lots of options you just yeah. need to plan it out in advance that's and good. it's you know there's it's a wonderful way to get excited about the eclipse uh, I would also, there's so many uh, science-related skills that can be developed during that, observation skills, for example. Uh, so I would encourage um, people to plan to have a little observation log uh, for their kids. Um, we'll have a, a really neat printable one available online. So you can just write at different times as you're observing, write down the time, write down what you see, either through the pinhole projector mm -hmm. um, or your glasses and your observations about what does the light look around you? Do you notice any differences in the wind, in the temperature, um, in animal behavior, all those kinds of things. Cool. And I, I imagine that that can be done ahead of time in class with teachers, right? Like yeah. all of this is like prep getting them ready for the event itself. Absolutely. Um, you know, astronomy is an important part of science. It's something that is taught in school. Like what better opportunity than the eclipse to really uh, teach some of those concepts, but not just the concepts about like the earth, the moon, the sun, but um, also things like observation skills, data collection skills, all those kinds of things. Like it's just a really exciting event where you can latch on um, to it uh, to teach some of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many good educational resources online. Um, so on our website, for Let's Talk Science, uh, there's lots of research resources, both for teachers and for parents as well. So you'll find all like safety reminders and science experiments, and you'll find instructions to make a pinhole viewer. Um, there's age appropriate explanations to help explain what happens exactly during um, an eclipse. Um, there's resources for teachers uh, to teach those observation skills. Um, data collection skills as well, the printable Eclipse journal. Um, we're also doing, I mean, even though, even if the teachers won't be with the students in person at their school mm -hmm. uh, that day, they can do so much to prepare um, the students to make it into an educational experience, mm -hmm. um, depending on the age group. Uh, for little kids, I think uh, something like a story time type mm -hmm. activity is good. So we'll have a virtual STEM story time uh, where we'll read a book about the sun and we'll do a little craft that helps um, with understanding what happens during the eclipse. For older uh, youth as well, so more like high school age, there's the opportunity to talk about the significance of the eclipse as a mesocosm, which is a kind of natural experiment where you're changing just one variable at a time. So just the brightness of the sun. It's right. not every day that you get to change the <laughs> brightness of the sun and keep right. everything else the same. So what happens in that case uh, to the environment? So we will we encourage that kind of type of thinking as well. So we'll have some resources around uh, what's a mesocosm and how can you use it to make predictions about things like the effect of climate change in the future. So there's all kinds of connections that can be made uh, depending on the age of the kids and the students.
And that elementary um, webinar that you had mentioned, is that open for classes as well? They can yeah. they sign up and they can just come and attend it's and they get open. a story time plus they get a little exactly. Active. Awesome. It's available. Uh, yeah, we'll have it in English and French. It's actually we run a STEM story time almost every week, um, but this time we'll align it with the eclipse. So and cool. yeah, it's free. So you get to read a book and then do an activity, a science hands-on activity that connects to the book. So it's a great way to touch both on literacy um, and science as well. some other advice that you might give to a parent about that day on um, April 8th? Yeah, I think have a plan in advance for safety. So is it going to be glasses or a pinhole projector? Uh, think about where you're going to be, as we discussed before. If you can't go, if it's not possible for you to go to the region of totality, don't worry about it. Uh, you'll have a great time anyways. Then for the day of the eclipse, uh, make sure you check out like what time the partial eclipse will start and what time the peak of the eclipse, the total eclipse will be as well. Um, I would bring like a few additional activities like to bring the kids in, uh, to keep them entertained and engaged because like over the course of the time, you know, your kids best. So, you know, what their attention span is going to be like. But those pinhole projectors are really neat activity, having a piece of paper, like getting them to draw what they're seeing at different times that reinforces some of those observation skills and keeps them entertained. Um, I had a great time uh, with a group of kids at the last eclipse, just we decided to go to the playground mm -hmm. and they played on the playground while they're waiting for the peak of the eclipse and all that. So they got to uh, get a little bit of physical activity and cool. and all <laughs> that kind of stuff to help them be patient uh, <laughs> while the eclipse was popping in and out of the clouds. Um, so yeah, just a few ideas. That's great.